from the United States of America. Stand by, Americans. Here's Mail Call. One big package of words and music and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear in answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And standing at the microphone now to act as your mistress of ceremonies in answer to all your many requests from overseas is one of MGM's brightest young stars, the sensational little actress you enjoyed so much in Two Girls and a Sailor. Here she is, a very cute face with a voice to match, June Allison. Give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze. Listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees. Send me off forever, but I ask you please. Don't fence me in. Just turn me loose. Let me straddle my old saddle underneath the western sky. On my cayuse, let me wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise. I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences. Gaze at the moon till I lose my senses. Can't look at all but then I can't stand fences. Don't fence me in. a brand new signature to your mail call letter. And who could fit into a mail call better than a postman? Especially if the postman happens to be a great new comedian who plays the part of Jerry Dingle on the Fanny Bry show, Danny Thomas. up our peripatetic postman, Jerry Dingle, as he breezily reports for duty to the head coach of Old Sycamore Prep. Jerry, I appreciate your answering my call. I can use you today. Oh, gee, Coach Wingbuck, anything I can do to help out the old team, you know me. Look at my eyes, clear as a bell. Look at my legs, muscles like iron. And look yeah, at my... whoa, whoa, hold on. It isn't your legs I'm interested in, it's your arms. My arms? You mean you're going to let me carry the ball? Uh, no, Jerry, I want you to carry the pail. <laughs> Pail? Yes, our regular water boy is sick, and I thought you could take his place today. Well, gee, Coach, uh, water boy. I mean, I've asked a lot of my friends to the game. What if they see me? Well, there's plenty of water, Jerry. <laughs> Give him a drink. <laughs> I won't do it, that's all. I won't do it, I tell you, I won't do it. I don't want to be water boy. Stop it, Jerry, you're acting like a baby. You want to carry the water, or don't you? Well, that's the spirit. Two o'clock sharp. Now run along. I got a lot of plays to work out. Big shot coach. Goes to college for four years to learn how to blow a whistle. <laughs> What's so tough about blowing a whistle? Any moron can do it. I've been blowing one for years. <laughs> Big man. When he played football for Sycamore, he was the lemon in their T formation. <laughs> he should have been a string changer on a yo-yo team. <laughs> what a show up. I could be a better coach than him any time. Boy, I can just picture myself in the locker room, inspiring the team between halves. What a coach I'd be. 
Sure, why not? It's a free country. I'm a citizen. Officer Coach Dingle. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Dingle doesn't coach football teams. He's a second half bucker upper. That's right. He gives pep talks in locker rooms between halves. Thank you. Oh, hello, Miss Gibney. Any messages? Harvard University called. Sorry, Miss Gibney. Can't make it. How about Princeton? Can't make it. Oh, yes, the dean of Vassar called. Vassar? <laughs> that I'll make. <laughs> My old alma mater. Your alma mater? Yeah. Vassar's a girl's school. I know. My father sent me there. He wanted me to have all the things mother didn't have. <laughs> Coach Dingle, I need your help. Do you really get results with those pep talks? Do I? Just look at some of my clients. Notre Dame, Purdue, Ohio State, Michigan. How's Michigan doing? I don't know. They're probably still counting the votes. <laughs> uh, your face looks familiar. That's right. I'm Coach Wingbuck of Sycamore Prep. Wingbuck, eh? I thought you might come calling around to me one of these days. What's your problem? Oh, you've got to help the old team out, Dingle. It's the end of the first half and we're a little behind. What's the score? 87 to nothing. <laughs> this is a case for Coach Dingle. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Grab that water pail. <laughs> All right, men. Gather around while I check the lineup. Parapluchikov. Present, sir. Wajina Braskowitz. Present, sir. Pani Slavnitsky. Present, sir. Jones. Jones. Uh, excuse me, please. Do not speak English. <laughs> All right. Men... I want you all to rise now, place your helmets over your hearts, and sing with me that great alma mater song, We're Strong for Toledo. Toledo? Yeah. Our school is Sycamore Prep. I know, but Toledo has a better song. <laughs> Listen, I'll sing it for you myself. We're strong for Toledo. Oh. T-O-L-E-D-O oh. One of you is saying bum. <laughs> Excuse me. The girls are the fairest and the boys are the square of any old town that I know. Boy, is that corn. I heard that remark. Corny, is it? Well, my friend, let me ask you this. What is corn and who are we to say that it is? You know, if you're not a little bit corny, there's something the matter with you. Why, when you walk down the street of a town like Toledo, or better still, Deerfield, Michigan, 20 miles northwest of, 165 citizens strong, that's the town. <laughs> the town where I was born. Brought into the world by a veterinarian, in case you're interested. <laughs> I really was. I'll never forget, Mama told me when the old vet gave me that first slap, she said, there's going to be a lucky coat. <laughs> well, when you walk down the street of a town like that, coming in the opposite direction is a man commonly referred to by the alleged intelligentsia as a yokel, a corny guy. He doesn't know you from a box of soybeans. But he smiled. Howdy, neighbor. Take the rain and hurt the rhubarb. So it's not such a brilliant remark. Maybe it isn't even going to rain. Now lay your 10 to 7, you're not growing rhubarb. <laughs> but at least he smiled and he said something. Oh, I'll never forget Deerfield. There were 17 of us living under one roof. A ramshackle old farmhouse. 17 humans. One bathtub. <laughs> I remember the day it came with a set of directions. <laughs> and every Saturday night, while we were working out in the fields, as soon as the hot water was ready, Ma used to ring the bell, and we made a mad dash right through the fields to get there. The tank held enough water for only 16 baths. Poor Uncle Bill. He was always the 17th. And no matter how fast he ran, 16 of us ran faster. I'll never forget one Saturday night, in the middle of one of his best runs, he was running in earnest that night. He meant to get there. But unfortunately, the odds were against him. And so was the Zodiac. There were no stars. It was pitch dark. You couldn't see a darn thing. And he ran right smack into the clothesline. 
He never had a chance. <laughs> well, sir, Uncle Bill lay there tangled up in that clothesline for three weeks. But he wasn't lonesome. Every time one of us walked by him, we smiled. Howdy, Uncle Bill! Think the rain hurt the rhubarb? <laughs> then Uncle Bill passed away at the ripe old age of 104, and we laid him to rest in his favorite spot, the bathtub. <laughs> and we put the bathtub in the rhubarb patch. And now when we pass there, we say, howdy, rhubarb, you think the rain will hurt Uncle Bill? <laughs> so you see, boys, that's why you mustn't be ashamed to sing. We're strong for Toledo. Oh. That's the place where the Buckeyes grow. Oh. In any old weather, we'll all stick together. Thank you, Danny Thomas. Fellas and gals, in radio it's just a hop, skip, and a short bronco ride from Grand Opera to a gang of singing cowboys. These boys can really give out with a sagebrush serenade. Here they are, the great new Western group with Fireball Mail, the riders of the Purple Sage. Partners. We ain't a letting you off that easy. Well, anything you say, gal. Now, if y'all will just step to one side while we brand this hunk of prairie prattle called tumbling tumbleweeds. Well, zoot! I beg your pardon. I mean, hot diggity. See them tumbling down, pledging their love to the ground. Oh. I'll be found Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed Cares of the past are behind Nowhere to go but I'll find Just where the trail will wind Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed I know when night has gone that a new world's born at dawn. I'll keep rolling along deep in my 
heart is a song Here on the range I belong Thank you, boys. And now I'd like to answer a few special letters on this mail call. According to your request to Armed Forces Radio Service, a number you kind of like is A Love Like Ours. I'd like to do it for you now. And dedicate it to Seaman Ben Byers, Robert Miners, and Bobby Seedman, Fleet Post Office, San Francisco, Corporal Jack Markfield, and Brother Sergeant Al, and all the rest of you men who wrote those wonderful letters. Here's... <laughs> A love like ours Is something very precious Don't abuse it Or you will be sorry It ain't wise to jeopardize A love like ours A love like ours Should never be manhandled Treat it gently as you would a flower It ain't sound to kick around a love like ours Hold tight on to it Don't let a foolish women danger sweet romance Don't take a chance Passing fancy It ain't something To play fast and loose with Take my tip Don't slide or slip You will make a great mistake Why tip fate and terminate A love like Thank you. Well, this certainly seems to be a gala night for bright new events in radio. This last season, two of your favorites hit airwaves with a swell show of their own. Of course, I'm referring to the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, with Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Folks, there's usually something going on at the Nelson household. So let's look in at their house on Rogers Road and see what's happening on this particular morning. At the moment, Ozzie and Harriet are browsing through the morning paper. Hey, there's quite a bit happening in the world this morning. Oh, there certainly is. And look at this unusual item. A dog by the name of Dice Game had eight puppies. A dog named Dice Game had eight puppies. <laughs> what's so unusual about that? She did it the hard way, two floors. <laughs> Does it really say that in the paper? Yeah, and look what else I found, Harriet. Hey, just listen to this ad. Beautiful eight-room house for rent, two baths, completely furnished, $35 a month. Where do you see that? Right over here in this column, the one called 25 Years Ago Today. <laughs> well, it have to be something like that. Housing conditions today are simply terrible. Yeah, it's really awful. All those people without any rooms. Gosh, I wonder what... Hey, I have an idea. You know our spare room? You mean that room your mother uses when she drops in and spends three days with us? Three days? Yes, yeah, Sunday, Monday, and always. <laughs> <laughs> just joking, you know, just joking. I'll bet you are. <laughs> Listen, but don't you think we ought to offer that room to someone who really needs it? Hey, that's a wonderful idea. And I can't think of anyone who needs it more than a serviceman. Oh, Ozzie, that's super. All we have to do is list our room with the USO. Uh, say, Harry, what do you think we ought to ask for, a sailor or a soldier? Well, gee, I don't know, Ozzy. After all, what's the difference between a soldier and a sailor? Mm, about 18 buttons. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going to have somebody extra in the house, I think we ought to tell Gloria about it. You know, it's going to make more work for her. I don't think she'll mind, but maybe you ought to see how she feels about it. Oh, Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me, Mrs. Nelson? 
yes, I did, Gloria. You know how tough it is to get apartments these days, don't you? Oh, yes, it's a terrible problem. Do you know my cousin and her family are paying $60 a month for two rooms with an adjoining? An adjoining what? I don't know. They haven't been able to get the door open yet. <laughs> Gloria, Mr. Nelson and I have been thinking of letting someone use our spare room. And, well, we just wanted to make sure it'd be all right with you. Oh, I don't mind. I've always worked hard. I come from a very large family, you know, and I had to support them. You mean you had to support your father, too? Well, only on Saturday night. <laughs> no, no, Gloria, Mrs. Nelson means didn't your father work? Oh, yes, my father worked. We used to keep it pretty quiet, but confidentially, my father was a bartender. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a bartender. I know. But you see, my father invented a new drink, the San Fernando Valley Cocktail. <laughs> the San Fernando Valley Cocktail? Yeah. One drink and you settle down and never more roam. <laughs> right with you, Gloria. We're going to let a serviceman use the room. Oh, that'll be nice. You know my boyfriend's a serviceman. Your boyfriend's a serviceman? Oh, yes. <laughs> In Roosevelt's company. Oh, you mean one of Jimmy Roosevelt's Marine Raiders? No, one of Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's all settled. We just wanted to let you know that there may be a soldier or a sailor here very soon. Well, thanks for telling me. I'll go put some lipstick on. I say soldier or sailor, because I don't know which it'll be. Well, Mrs. Nelson, sailors are pretty fresh. I hope it's a sailor. <laughs> say, Gloria, do you think maybe you ought to run along now and straighten out the room? Oh, yes. And, Mr. Nelson, I just thought of something. Wouldn't it be odd if you happened to get my brother? Oh, is he in the service? No, that's why it'd be so odd. <laughs> Oh, well, Gloria, Mr. Nelson and I are going downtown now, and we'll register with USO. If they should phone, then you'll know what it's all about. Hmm? Yeah, that's where we're going to get this sailor or soldier. Well, my goodness, why go to all the trouble of getting him that way? Well, do you know an easier way? Well, sure, just stand on the corner and whistle. <laughs> Sergeant Mulligan, I think I have just the place for you to spend your furlough. I'm calling the party now. Hello, Nelson resident. Hello, this is the USO calling. The who? The USO. How do you spell it? <laughs> U-S-O. Oh, it's just like you pronounce it, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Uh, will you please tell Mrs. Nelson that I'm sending out a Marine this evening? How many? One, that's all Mrs. Nelson asked for. Yes, I know. I just thought I could do a little recruiting on my own. <laughs> well, please tell Mrs. Nelson that the Marine, Sergeant Mulligan, will be there about 8 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. I'll give her the message. You'll be sure now. Oh, certainly. I always tell them anything anybody says. Well, that's good. Sometimes they hate me for it. <laughs> well, goodbye, you asshole. Yes. <laughs> goodbye, and thank you very much. There you are, Sergeant Mulligan. It's all arranged. You can spend your furlough in a lovely private home. I'm sure it'll be very comfortable. Oh, thank you very much. Sure will be nice to live in a home again for a while. Even if I am a Marine, I guess a girl is a girl. Oh, Ozzy, did Gloria tell you the lady from the USO phoned while we were out? Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. A Marine is coming over, Sergeant Mulligan. He'll be here about 8 o'clock. I guess we better hurry and get this room fixed up. Sergeant Mulligan of the Marines. Probably built like a big bruiser. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but we want to make everything as comfortable as possible for the sergeant. You know, Harriet, I read something about barrel chest Mulligan, the wrestler joining the Marines. Maybe this is the same Mulligan. Oh, really? Gee, we could have a lot of fun wrestling around the room together. <laughs> oh, Ozzy, you're liable to get hurt. Oh, don't worry about me. Just wait till I try some of my new grips on the sergeant. Well, who can tell?
Well, you're liable to become great pals. Sure, I wouldn't be surprised if I spent most of my time right in this room here. <laughs> well... <laughs> well, it'll be a nice change for you anyway. <laughs> What are you doing there, dear? Oh, I was just looking in the bureau drawer. I'd better put an extra pair of pajamas in here. What for? Marines don't wear pajamas. Well, I don't think they wear nightgowns with lace on them. <laughs> That's all I'd have to see, Sergeant Mulligan walking around in a nightgown. <laughs> well, Marines must sleep in something. Only their underwear. They like to show off their tattooing. <laughs> well, Harriet, didn't the laundry come back yet? What are you looking for? Some clean shorts. If it's a nice day tomorrow, Mulligan and I might sit out in the yard and take a sun bath. <laughs> we don't uh, happen to have any cigarettes in the house, do we? No, but I'm putting one of your pipes and some cigars by the bed here. Oh, that's good. That's probably Sergeant Mulligan now. Well, thank goodness the room's all in order. Let's go let him in. Good evening. I'm Sergeant Mulligan of the Marines. Why, I, 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 I'm... <laughs> Why... <laughs> Why, suddenly you're a girl. Oh, no, I've been one for years. <laughs> no, you see, what he means is that, well, we thought that... You see, we were expecting a boy. <laughs> so were my parents, but then I came along. <laughs> oh, I guess I can see what's the trouble, though. They didn't tell you at the USO, and you thought the Marine Sergeant was going to be a man. <laughs> well, yes, and this is quite a shock. I'll say we're expecting a hard-boiled egg, and we got one that's powdered. <laughs> Naturally, you're more than welcome, Sergeant Mulligan. Come on in. Uh, do I hear somebody else at the door? Oh, I, I hope you won't think it an imposition, Mrs. Nelson, but I brought along a few of my buddies. Do you think we'll take up too much room? Oh, nonsense. The more the merrier. Oh. Come on in, girls. You're just in time for dinner. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. First, we'll have a nice home-cooked dinner, and then Ozzy will take us all dancing at the Palladium. Oh, oh. What's the matter, Ozzy? What are you so puzzled about? Well, I've gotten used to girl cab drivers, girl policemen, and even girl telegraph boys. But I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be dancing cheek to cheek with a Marine. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Harriet, Ozzie, B, Gloria, Benaderet, and everyone else who dropped in. Well, that's about the last paragraph in this mail call letter. So until we pick up the pen and ink again next week, this is June Allison saying thanks for inviting us. So long and good luck, fellas, and his love and kisses to you all. Well, that's it, fellas. The end of another mail call letter. Signatures include June Allison, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard, Danny Thomas, the writers of The Purple Sage, yours truly, Carlton Cadell. This program was arranged with the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee. Another mail call will be coming your way the next time you hear... This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.